Hey Michigan fans, welcome to the Fool Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. This is the recap of Michigan's win over Rutgers. And, you know, this game isn't exactly how I thought it would go. I thought Michigan's defense would be a little more uh, dominant. But it makes total sense. I mean, think about it. The revenge tour, right? The revenge tour has been going Wisconsin, Michigan State bye week, Penn State. Three big games in a row. There was no need to, you know, get yourself up for the game. You're at a super high. Everything was going great. That's what you're thinking. But all of a sudden you come to the next week and you're getting all the pats on the back. You're getting number four in the college football playoff. And all of a sudden, here you're playing Rutgers, who's 1-8. Their only win was against a you know, lower-tier football team. And it's like, everyone's telling you, well, it's go you're going to win. It's going to be nothing. You're going to win. And even the TV broadcasts, in the first like drive of the game, they're talking about who's going to be the backup when Patterson gets taken out because Michigan's going to roll him. And everyone was expecting Michigan to destroy Rutgers. Like, who's going to be number two? Who's number three in the quarterback rotation? And even though the coaches tried their best, I'm sure, to get them to focus, it was just hard for Michigan. If you watch that game, we were just making, I want to say mental mistakes. We just weren't sharp. We were not sh as sharp as we were in the last three games. You know, we're having holes that the records ran on us really good. In fact, they gave up... Uh, well, 193 rushing yards. Michigan gave up 193. Uh, even if you subtract the 80-yard run, they're still averaging 3.5 yards per rush. I mean, that's not great, but that's a lot better than what most people do against Michigan. So, I mean, they, their game plan worked to the fact that Michigan just... Again, I'm not taking nothing from Rutgers. They think they're a much better team than 1-9 and nine now, but Michigan just wasn't sharp. We weren't on point. And... Yeah, I totally get it. This is exactly what I thought would happen, though. In the end, a 42-7 to game, something in that range. Michigan was pretty much unstoppable on offense. You know? And, and oh, another thing, just thinking of offense, another example of how we weren't taking this game seriously is we had those two plays, Donovan Peoples-Jones and Ben Mason, who had big well, first downs on third downs, right? And Peoples-Jones, I give him a little bit more leeway. He had, like, probably a 15, 16-yard pass. He gets attempted tackle. The guy didn't wrap him up. And Peoples-Jones thinks, hey, I'm going to make a big play. Instead of, like, just going up and getting um, one or two more yards, he's like, no, I'm going to go all the way around and try to loop around the whole defense. And then, after that, you know, he lost, like, about seven yards. So we made it. We still got the first down. Then, of course, Ben Mason. <laughs> It's third and one, and he gets like three yards, but he's not being tackled either. So he decides he's going to go off the pile and backwards and gets tackled. And so we don't even get the first down, so we had to go for it on fourth down. It's like, ah, guys, come on. Stay focused, stay focused. Those were just examples to me how the team was just not focused enough. They were thinking Rutgers was an easy win, and they were. Don't get me wrong. So that's just an example of why we didn't play as well as we could have, because... They're human beings. They know Rutgers is going to be an easy win for them. So be it. Um, I gotta say, the Rutgers defense really did a good job stopping our run. We only had 193 yards rushing. I mean, <laughs> they've been giving up over 200 yards per game. And I mean, if they were like the last in the... I mean, just not very good at all against stopping the run. So they really focused on stopping the run. And if you, you know, Evans had the 61-yard rush, they did actually a pretty good job on us. I, again, I give them credit. They played a pretty good game and still lost 42-7. to I mean, <laughs> Patterson, though, he threw the ball 27 times, and he got hit, I think, zero times. There was no sacks on him, at least I know that. I don't even think he got hit. On a couple of those touchdown plays, he's just sitting back there, runs this way, Nothing comes back this way. I think that was the one to Martin where he found him in the end of the corner. If I had a TiVo, I'd go back and just watch and see how long he actually held the ball. I mean, the offensive line did a great job of pass protection. So all in all, Michigan got what they wanted, right? You got a 
dominant win. We didn't quite get as many reserves in as we wanted. I was kind of a little surprised. It was in question who would be the backup quarterback. Was it going to be Milton? Was it going to be Pat, sorry, or uh, Peters? They went with Peters first, and then they put in Milton. So, I don't know if that says who is number two there or not. I think it does. I think that says Peters is number two. But they did play Milton in another game. I don't know. I know some people are saying you shouldn't play him. Try to reserve that red shirt. We, we got two games left. I don't think you're going to see him again unless it's uh, maybe in the bowl game or the college football playoff game. Maybe maybe in, you know, Indiana game you might. Because three, you can play in four without losing it. Well, we'll see. I'm not surprised we saw him this game, though. So, great win for Michigan. Defense played fine. I mean, yeah, they didn't get hold them to, like, you know, 28 yards or whatever. They still held them to 7 points, right? Everything's not about yards. Points are important, too. And he gave up 7 points. at 7 points in 3 straight games. That's playing pretty good defense. Yeah, I know uh, us spoiled Michigan fans wish, you know, they would have had, like, negative yards and all that. But, eh, eh. eh. The team just wasn't that focused, wasn't that sharp. And that's to be expected. In fact, Michigan had zero sacks. Zero sacks. I wonder when's the last time a Dom Brown defense had zero sacks. But there is part of a reason to that. Rutgers had zero passing yards in the first half. The guy was just getting the ball out of his hands very quickly. Uh, it was good to see, though, that the screen passes were there for big plays if they completed them. They didn't. That's Rutgers, but that's a good thing to shore up against Indiana and Ohio State. It looks like it's going to come down to Michigan versus in Ohio State, sorry, in the game to determine who's going to go off and win the Big Ten East and to represent them in the Big Ten title game. So that will make that game extremely stressful. Okay, that's looking ahead. We got Indiana next week. All right, thanks for watching. In the comments below, what do you think about this game? To me, Recapping, just ho hum. <laughs> Isn't that great? A 42 to 7 game is ho hum. What a way we've changed since. Um, sorry, Jim Harbaugh has come to Michigan. In 2014, we lost to Rutgers. We lost to them. Next year, we bring in Jim Harbaugh. Big changes. You're getting 42 to 7 victories over teams you lost to. Don't take that for granted, Michigan fan bases. He's a good coach. I love him as my coach, and I really like the attitude of this team. I hope it keeps going. So, let me know what you were really impressed with at the game. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate the subscribers I've gotten, and of course the comments. I reply to every comment, so I just love to know what you guys are thinking. As always, go blue!